Okay, so Monzo, Starling, and Revolu all have one thing in common. They're digital-first neobanks based in the UK that are taking on traditional high street banks. Competition in the banking sector took a big leap forward this week with the launch of a number of online neobanks. And in September 2021, JP Morgan Chase launched a digital current account in the UK. And while it doesn't feel right to call Chase a neobank, especially because they have so many branches in the US, you can definitely see the similarities between them and their neobank counterparts. And while banks like Starling have helped usher in an era of online banking, forcing traditional banks to do better, Chase actually appears to be trying to flip the script and challenge neobanks at their own game. You see, this account comes with 1% cash back, 1.5% interest on savings, and 5% on roundups. And I'll get into all of this shortly, but I first just want to address that this is an industry leading rewards package. When it comes to spending on a debit card, there isn't really anything like it. This could encourage or perhaps even force other banks in the sector to try and rival these rates, which can only be a good thing for you and I. So with all of this in mind, I thought it'd be interesting to not only take a detailed look at this Chase account, but also see how it compares to Monzo, who we at Monito.com believe to be the best neobank for anyone interested in saving money. Right now, if you want to register for an account, you will have to join a waiting list. Although I read that this would only be a few days and of course, you'll be notified when you can sign up. Registering is also relatively quick and easy and involves just a soft credit check, some personal details and ID verification. So you will need a valid form of ID, which could be a passport, a driver's license, or an EU national identity card. And in case you're worried about sharing this information with Chase, they are regulated by the FCA, so the Financial Conduct Authority, and therefore they have to follow strict guidelines when it comes to how they not only handle your money, but also your personal information. You'll also need to be over 18 to open this account and have a UK telephone number and a smartphone with iOS 14 and above. Or if you have Android, you'll need access to Google Pay and the phone will have to be on Android 8.1 and above. Once you've gone through the registration process, you'll just have to wait for confirmation and that shouldn't take too long. For me, this was like, I think no more than an hour. So once you're confirmed and you have access to your account, you'll get the following. 1% cash back on purchases for the first 12 months, which must be activated in app. There's also 1.5% interest on savings on balances up to 250,000 pounds and 5% interest on any amount you save using the Chase Roundup feature. I'd say those are the three major benefits to this account, but there are also some other benefits such as direct debits, which kind of seems silly to mention, but this wasn't actually available when they first launched. And there's also no international transaction fee or ATM withdrawal fees. Although there is a limit on how much you can withdraw abroad, which I'll get to shortly. And if you do spend in a foreign currency with this account, you'll receive MasterCard's exchange rates, which are more or less on par with the real mid-market rate. This also means that you'll be receiving a physical MasterCard debit card in the post, which for me took around three days to arrive. In-app, you'll also get chat and phone support, and this account is FSCS protected, so deposits up to £85,000 are insured. The cashback is definitely one of the main value propositions of this account, and it really is industry leading in terms of what you can earn while spending with a debit card. A caveat is that it's only available for one year after you activate it, and Chase could technically stop running the promotion at any point. There are also a few things that won't earn you cash back, including purchasing crypto, gambling, and buying antiques. I'll also leave a link below under relevant links for this page so you can take a closer look. Monzo only offers cash back on international transfers, and this is with Monzo Plus and Premium, so we can't really compare the two accounts. In fact, we can't really compare it to any other account as there really isn't anything like it right now. I suppose we could look at American Express and the potential cashback you can earn, but that's obviously on a credit card and you could also argue it's not as good because not everywhere accepts Amex and this is a MasterCard which is accepted practically everywhere. You may also be thinking about making larger transactions to earn more cashback, for example, purchasing 
uh, furniture or electronics like televisions. But you have to remember, you won't get the benefit of Section 75 of the Consumer Credit Act, which essentially ensures your purchase. So in my opinion, I think it would be wise to use this card for purchasing things like fuel or perhaps your weekly shop, basically transactions that are safe and that you're confident won't need protection. The 1.5% interest is also pretty good and while it's obviously nowhere near inflation, compared to other banks, it's easily the best of a bad bunch. Now with Chase, you can open up to 10 of these 1.5% interest saver accounts, which you can customize in app. You can set a name, select an icon and a goal amount, and you will earn 1.5% on balances up to 250K. And that total is split across any savings accounts you have. It's easy access as well, which means there's no minimum deposit or fixed period of time. You can just deposit and withdraw the money freely and it's calculated daily and paid monthly. Here are some figures to help you understand what you could potentially earn from 1.5%. For example, deposits of 10K will earn 150 pounds across the year, 25K will earn 375 and so on. Just remember this is paid out monthly, so these figures would be divided across 12 payments. And while these numbers aren't eye-wateringly great, this is a safe way to deposit your money and earn interest. It's obviously better than just leaving the money in a high street current account, and I could see this being attractive to anyone who's perhaps perhaps maxed out their ISA contributions or is maybe just bored of never winning with premium bonds. I mean, if you need an easy access option and you don't want the risks that other types of investments can come with, then this is a safe bet and worth considering. With Monzo and their plus and premium accounts, you can earn 1% to 1.5% interest on balances up to 2,000 pounds, which obviously doesn't compare to this. However, for all account holders, they do have their savings pots, which are from third-party banks such as Paragon and Oak North. You can have up to 20 of these savings pots and they have easy access, ISAs and fixed. There is a great deal of choice, but ultimately none of them really compare to Chase. The best in terms of interest right now is this 1.81% fixed 12 month pot from Oak North, which is a minimum deposit of 500 pounds. So you could technically open 20 of these, at least I think, and have 10,000 pounds earning 1.81%. So if you're someone who wants to earn interest on 10,000 pounds or below, and you're happy for the money to be deposited into a fixed pot for a year, then right now Monzo could be a better choice than Chase. Anything above that though, and I think Chase and their easy access 1.5% interest appears to be the way to go. The final major value proposition of this account is the 5% interest on roundups. This is a nice little bonus saving feature and for those who aren't aware, rounding up is when you make a transaction and the amount is rounded up to the nearest pound and the difference is deposited into a separate account. So if you bought a coffee for £2.50, the transaction would be rounded up to £3 and 50 pence deposited into your savings account and Chase would then reward you with 5% interest on that 50p, so that would be two and a half p. So if you did that every day for a year, you're looking at nine pounds and 12 pence, which obviously isn't a huge amount of money, and while you could round up a lot more transactions than just one, we should definitely recognize that while 5% may sound like a lot, it's still going to require a great deal of spending to make it really worthwhile. But it is still free money, which we definitely shouldn't take for granted. With Monzo, you can deposit roundups into regular pots, and if you have plus and premium, you'll earn one to 1.5% up to 2,000 pounds. And you can also have roundups deposited into those easy access saving pots that I showed you earlier. Although the potential interest you can earn with Monzo and roundups compared to Chase is still not great. And this is what I meant at the beginning when I said that Chase is flipping the script on neobanks. There's no traditional bank or neobank in the UK offering anything like this, and that could be a good Thing for consumers and we may actually see similar offerings from other banks. But also, how deep do your pockets have to be to be able to provide interest like this? Obviously JP Morgan has incredibly deep pockets, as do other banks, but if we look at Monzo who, according to their own financial reports, appear to be struggling in terms of profitability, it's difficult to imagine them actually being able to compete with this. 
International banking with this card isn't too bad. Like I mentioned, if you spend abroad, you'll get MasterCard's exchange rates, which are typically 0.25% above the mid-market rate. So only a very small markup. ATM withdrawals are also free, although you are limited to 700 pounds internationally, which is kind of frustrating as a lot of countries are still cash orientated. I mean, take Southeast Asia, for example. You're definitely going to need cash in countries like Vietnam and Thailand, and a limit of 700 pounds could be annoying. But it does really depend on where you're going and your personal preferences, as I know some people like to carry cash while others don't. But because of this, it's not quite the perfect travel card. And in fact, I actually made a video on travel cards recently and the ones I recommend, which I'll link below and one that only uses the correct exchange rates. There are certainly some downsides to this account, although these will entirely depend on your banking needs. For example, you can't make cash or check deposits, which I appreciate a lot of you won't require. There are also no overdrafts or loans, which you also might not need, especially if you're drawn to this as a savings account. The app is also basic, which may or may not be a bad thing, and some may argue that its simplicity is a good thing and that it makes it easier to use. What I find odd though is that this app only works for iOS 14, which is a relatively young operating system. It was released only 19 months ago, so it's possible some people may need to update their phones just to get this account. That also means that anyone with an iPhone 6 or older will actually need to buy a new phone. Also, Monzo works with iOS 10, Starling 10.3, and Revolut 13. So why is this possibly the most basic app but needs to use the most recent iOS? I literally have no idea, so maybe someone in the comments section can help. Also, as far as I can tell, there's no iPad app. And obviously there's no website, so you can't access the account through your desktop. And there's no joint accounts. The card is also blank, so what I mean is it doesn't have any details on. So if you were to go to pay for something without using like your phone like Apple or Google Pay, you'd have to have like the details written down or or memorized or I mean, if you're using your phone, you'd have to flip between the Chase app and the website you're using, which could be a nuisance. I mean, of course, with Google and Apple Pay, this isn't an issue. However, there are still some websites and companies and even people that don't use this. So like I said, it could be a nuisance for some people. There is this question of whether or not JP Morgan Chase and their highly unethical and immoral investments are a reason to not open this account. This is something I've seen discussed on numerous forums and in various videos. And in fact, Andy Clever Cash actually mentioned this in a video. He made a great argument discussing JP Morgan's ethical consumer score, which was atrocious. In a nutshell though, JP Morgan is essentially the biggest enabler of fossil fuel financing. They are literally pumping billions of dollars into extracting fossil fuels from Earth. And not only that, but over the past few years, they've also been the biggest Western investor of Gazprom, who you may have heard of, especially recently with the war in Ukraine. For those that don't know though, Gazprom are a Russian state energy company. So knowing all of this, you can't really blame people for feeling uncomfortable about depositing their money into this account. But it's up to you to decide. Personally, I don't feel comfortable with it, but in today's society, it's pretty hard to avoid getting caught up in nefarious investments and activities. For example, I own stock in Shopify, so what's to say there aren't companies right now selling illegal goods enabled through a Shopify store? You see, where do you draw the line? I guess I'd be curious to know your thoughts on this. Is it something that would stop you from opening an account? And if you have already opened one, then let me know how your experience has been so far. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and please consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.